Q1057, Albany's Rock Station and the Q1057 app. I'm Steve King and joined by comedian Jim Brewer. He's at the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall October 8th. That's Tuesday night. Check him out. Very, very funny. Jim, how are you? Very good. Yourself? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. And to you. I had the uh, opportunity to see you open for Metallica in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, wow. And it was a kick-ass show, and what a great way to open that show. Well, yeah, it was, I had a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, uh, that was one of my all-time favorite gigs I got to do ever. Yeah? Ever. I'll bet. I mean, you know, I grew up, that was me. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you told me when I saw them open it up for Ozzy in 86, <laughs> that, oh, yeah, you'll be touring with them uh, you know, 30, 40 years later or whatever it is. I, I, I would have never seen that happening, but that was, um, that was quite a quite an event for me to put that together. And I think Lincoln, Nebraska too, that was, that was one of the first or second legs. It's like the third. The it, yeah. It was like the second, it was, I think second leg, it was like the second or third date of that, that leg of the tour. So, yeah, yeah. Was I doing the sing-alongs at the end yet um no you weren't doing the sing-alongs yet i don't remember that man you guys missed out oh see if i had moved to albany where i am now if i'd moved here because that was later in the tour i would have seen it but i didn't move soon enough (laughs) yeah that's all good oh good yeah because as time went on that my the opening show i would change yeah i would i'm like "Ah, i want to do something more a little more fun i want to try something different with the crowd and by the time we were done, it was it was the last two three weeks were pretty killer. I had fun throughout all of it. Oh, of course, but I'm glad you were there, and I'm glad you liked it. Well, and what I've loved, I've seen you several times, and I've always been a big fan of yours because you mix the music with the comedy. You know, all the way from you know ACDC doing the hokey pokey, and you know everything yeah. else that you've done. Um, I've always been a huge fan, but I always know that if I see you on stage, like you know, coming up October eighth here at the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall. Every show is a little bit different, and that's what I love. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. As a matter of fact, I'm filming every single one of my tour dates this year. Really? 30, there's 36, 37, bringing a film guy. Because the last, you know, I've been doing that for a long time, mm-hmm. where, where I, 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 every show is different. Mm-hmm. And for me, it works really well, but capturing it has always been hard because then you're forced. I'm not very good. We're like, okay, I got to write it and joke and write it and joke and write it and joke. I, I like setting things up, but I also like being able to free wheel here and there and go off the, off the tracks. And so it's worked for me big time. The last two, three years I've been filming and that's why on my social media, you'll see a stand up comedy bit here, mm-hmm. a stand up comedy bit there. Um, you know, I may do 20 minutes in Albany that I'll never do anywhere else. Right. So that's, that's why people need to be really, at the show. <laughs> yeah, I love So We need to start capturing all of this. So I'm pretty excited about this tour for that reason as well. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing when I show up. So what are you going to do with all this footage once you've taped all these 30 shows and everything that you have in the past? Are you looking at a, a special coming up or a DVD or what, what are you going to do it with could it? Be, it, could, it could be all the above. I, I love that I have control of it all. You know, it's, not, it's not like I'm working on my one-hour special. Right. I, I was locked and loaded for two one-hour specials three years ago. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, for whatever reasons they weren't they weren't ready to be uh on certain platforms so <laughs> i i took advantage of that and I went you know what that's okay that's all right i'm gonna hold on to that and now i'll do it my way and then in time i'm gonna have all this material and i will figure out how to put it out there how to market it mm-hmm. you know and just like you said me and me and my crew have been talking about maybe we have the best of the road Sure. DVD series. Maybe we just release uh, 45 minutes. Maybe we do, who knows what we can do. I may have two one-hour specials. I may have three one-hour specials. That's what I'm super excited about 
on this whole freaking tour. Well, and you've always seemed to be the guy that has reinvented himself over and over and over again from, you know, stand up in small clubs and then you're on TV, you're doing Saturday Night Live and then you're doing some movie stuff with Half Baked and then, you know, you're doing the rock thing with a band behind you. It seems like every, exactly. you know, all the time I see you and you're like reinvented almost. I can honestly say Every time I've had a passion to just do something, mm -hmm. I do it. I, I just do it. And right now, the passion is, God, it feels good to go on a stage, write a couple things out, but also have that freedom of not going anywhere. And, I, and, I, and I've recognized over the last 10 years, a lot of my following, they're like pearl jammers. They mm -hmm. go, you know, this is my fifth time seeing you. Because you're always different. Right. Really? This is my seventh time. Seventy times? <laughs> and I saw you I saw you in two thousand three. Then I saw you here. Then I saw you on this rock festival. Then I I love that. I love that. That keeps me going. And um, I think more and more people find out and hopefully it'll keep growing. That's awesome. So when you when you're on stage here October eighth at the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall how much of that do you know what you're going to do? Are you like a 50-50 split? Are you, you always have stuff in your back pocket? I mean, you've been doing it long enough. You should have, you know, hours and hours of material, right? Yeah. When it comes to that night, I honestly have no clue. Wow. I know what I don't do. I don't do politics. I don't do news. <laughs> so I, I, I know how to relate to people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've lived a lot of scenarios. So it's easy. It's real easy for me to relate and tackle certain subjects far and wide. So I, I have a couple set pieces mm -hmm. that I know I have ready to go. I mean, hopefully I will never hit a place where I'm in autopilot. <laughs> exactly. And I, okay, this place is okay. These guys, <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this town, but okay, if you want the um, general topics that I have ready to go for the night, okay, here's my first 10 minute segment. I really don't know. Albany is one of those places where I'm just familiar with it. Mm -hmm. New York, the Detroit music, this is my fourth or fifth time there. Right. I know that crowd. I don't know what I'm bringing that night. I really don't know. That's fun, Not, man. I, I have an idea. Right. I have an idea, but I don't know. That's fun because, I mean, you were here like a year ago, and so people know when they come out to this show, it's it's going to be different. They're going to see new material, and you, they're going to see you just riffing, which is awesome. Oh, my God. Whatever I did the last three, four times, this is not even going to be close to what I'm <laughs> in the past. I was. You know what, what? What helped is I did a residency these last two years, mm -hmm. and um, I did 18 straight months in the theater in Long Island, and it really forced me to 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 be different every show because. You know, Long Island is in a huge place. Right. So they get 1,200 people in there month after month after month. Like, I got I to gotta reach back and, and really find – and that, that place helped me tremendously. I'll bet. I'll bet. Wow. What, what were you like as a kid, Jim? I was fat and wild. <laughs> were you fat? 82 pounds in kindergarten. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would kick that kickball, though. You wanted me on your kickball team. I'd hit that ball into the next ball. Was that your big sport? Oh, yeah. Kickball, uh, baseball, big, big baseball. Were you the... I'd hit the ball, you know, five yeah. miles to get a double. <laughs> were, you, were you the funny kid, though? Were you the class clown all the time? I wasn't the class clown until... Until, like, junior high mm -hmm. is when that started. Um, that's the, when, I, when I started hitting junior high, that's, that's when things started. Yeah. I mean, I, already, I, was a class, I was a clown at home. Right. But that's, that's when things really started in, in junior high. Have you uh, have you been back to like, you know, hometown school, going oh, yeah. to a high school reunion, and people go, oh, well, it all makes sense now? <laughs> well, I was class clown. I was voted class clown. Not surprising. So, but I haven't. I haven't. I haven't been to one reunion yet. Um, I wanted to do a couple every time they have a date. I'm either somewhere or 
The first time was when I got Sunday Live. That was my ten year reunion. Oh wow! I couldn't I couldn't do that, but I did just do recently a um, like a benefit for the high school I went to. Oh, that's cool. It was weird. Yeah. Walk in the hallways. They seem so much bigger. <laughs> but back then, I walked down like, oh my god, it seems so puny and just I don't know. It's, it's weird to look back in time. Mm-hmm. It is. So did you see any, like, old teachers or anything were there for the benefit or anything like that? Oh, God. I, I saw two or three, and I had no clue who they were. <laughs> you should have walked in with, like, a notebook and been like, I'm sorry, here's that assignment I was supposed to have, like, ten years ago. Here it is. Here's my book report. <laughs> there was at least, yeah, there were three of them, and I was like, oh, and you were in my class, and you had this one. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Zero clue what you're talking about. That's funny. I don't remember any of people. I couldn't name you three teachers that I had. I wow. hated school. Yeah. Hated school. I have a tough time telling my kids with college and this. I'm not going to lie to you. Don't, don't, don't feel pressure to go to college. It, it's, it's, unless you're a doctor or you're going for something very specific. What a waste of money. Yeah. Here, here's 40 grand going debt for four <laughs> years and guaranteed nothing when you get out. Who's in? I'm with what? you. I'm with you. I tell my kids, just do well enough in school that you can get out and get a good job because otherwise you'll have to be a radio DJ. <laughs> ah, this is very true. And we all know that's not stable. Exactly. And again, what is anymore? <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> this ain't the 50s anymore where you're like, oh, way to go to college, kid. <laughs> now here's your sign up here and you get your pension and you're set forever. That just don't exist anymore. No, that's for sure. That's for sure. Hey, I was wondering, uh, with your years at Saturday Night Live and stuff, have you ever been back to host? Have you ever hosted SNL? No. Why? No. Is there a reason? Is there? Would you host it know. if they asked you? Of course I would. I kind of figured Absolutely. you You had a great time I, doing that show, didn't you? I, I had a ball. I don't think I'm... I, I, I shouldn't assume their thoughts, but I don't think I'm one of their guys. Really? I really don't. Yeah, I mean, I just don't. I really don't. It's, uh, it, it ended a little awkward. Oh, okay. Um, it, you know, you can't find Goat Boy <laughs> on YouTube. The, you, you could find maybe one, but it's not, it's not the sketches. Not the good ones. Weird with that. It's really weird. You find you Pesci, find though. You, you find Pesci. You can find there. Pesci, mm -hmm. but you can't find the Goat Boy. It's a little weird. That is a little, um, that is a little weird. But, I, you know what? I, I, you know, I had a great time. I wanted to be the guy who was able to do movies and then come back and, and be like, hey, I'm a Senate Live guy. But right. never, I, if I had my choice, that's what would have happened. If they would ever ask me to host, I would do it. I think, um, it, you know, who knows? I don't know. It could be, it could be a lot of factors, but I, I really don't. I think that's going to be my, my new passion. I'm going to start a campaign to get Jim Brewer to host Saturday Night Live. That's my new, that's right, my new let, campaign. Let me know how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> be the new Betty Davis. Exa yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it'll be. So, um, <laughs> man, we're excited for you coming to town. I can't wait to see you at uh, Troy Savings Bank Music Hall, October 8th. Um, hey, you know, uh, right around that same time, uh, Metallica's S&M 2 comes out. You'll be able to oh, see yeah. that, man. You could, you could rock that out, too. All right, that sounds good. That's, uh, I didn't know. Now I got something even more to look forward See, to. See, there you go, man. Well, dude, there we're look, looking forward to it. I've been a fan for a lot of years. Uh, I've always really enjoyed your stuff, so I can't wait to see you uh, there at the I'm show. I'm going to crush it. I I'll know you will. that night. <laughs> Jim, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, man. All my best. Thank you. Take care. All right, buddy. <laughs> Bye.